Today we're going to continue looking at the Flex operating system as it runs on a Southwest Technical 6800 computer. This is the second video we've made about Flex. If you haven't watched the previous video uh, that introduces Flex, I'd recommend watching that first. It gives a little background as, on, as far as what we're going to do today. Now Flex was an operating system for the 6800 and 6809 family of computers. It was not particular to any one brand of computer. It was pretty much like CPM over in the 8080 and the Z80 world. And in fact, they both existed about the same time and had very similar capabilities. And because of that, we're going to compare the two back and forth today to get a better feel for how Flex compared to um, using CPM. All right, and CPM drives were designated A, B, C, D. Here in Flex, they're designated 0, 1, 2, 3 instead. And both systems, uh, both operating systems allowed you to explicitly specify drive identifiers in your commands. For example, I could do a directory or a catalog in the case of Flex of drive zero. And here we see what is on our system disk. And also I could do a catalog of drive one. And this is the work disk I have in, which actually is more of a play disk. I got a bunch of basic games in it. All right, and we could copy files around. For example, I could copy from drive zero. Let's copy, let's copy this free space command. So I could copy free.command to drive one free.command. Um, and copy, like pip, allows you to eliminate some of this. For example, if you don't even put that and just put the drive to go to, it automatically calls it free.command for you. And I can explicitly specify I want to run the free command off of drive one by leading it with the one, just like the A colon or the B colon in uh, CPM. Likewise, I could delete that now. Here's something kind of cool. You can actually put the drive designator after the file in case you forgot to type it while you were getting started. That's the exact same thing as typing it in front of it. All right, so you can see the two operating systems very similar here. You can do all sorts of things where you explicitly specify the drive it's gonna be on and deletes, copies, you name it, it's all basically the same. Now, what about the concept of the default drive that CPM has when you don't specify the drive number? That's a handy little feature. That's where it would say A here or B, and you could switch between the drives by doing A colon or B colon. Uh, that doesn't work here, of course, because this doesn't support that feature. However, that feature was also a, a bit of a problem in CPM, and I'll explain that in a second. It's something that they updated and fixed in uh, CPM3 by adding what was called the set default command. And what we'll find here is that Flex operates much more like CPM3 um, in that respect than it did CPM2. So the basic problem with using the default drive concept is that you typically have at least two drives in a system and on drive zero, which is what you just booted from or drive A in CPM, is your operating system related things. These are commands and utilities that you'd use for most any activity you're gonna do. Um, things just like printing a file or renaming a file or uh, executing a, a batch file, the things that are uh, common activities for whatever you're doing over on drive B. And in drive B, and in this case it's drive one, would be the disks that contain the files you're working on that day. And today we're looking at playing some basic games. Other times you might be doing word processing or some accounting or something like that. The problem you run into CPM is when you switch the default drive to be B, anytime you then run an operating system, if you forget to put A colon in front of it, it ends up not finding it. And after you do that 10 times in a row and cuss each time you do it, you eventually start copying a utility or two or three or four or five from drive A over onto your work disk. And pretty soon you've wasted half of your work disk with utilities because these disks are only, you know, 88K to begin with. And then um, you do that on your other work disks as well. So now you've got this mishmash of utilities on all of your quote B drives and um, they may not even be, be the same versions because you've updated them. And it's just a very incons inconsistent mess in the end. So to get around that, in CPM3, they added the set default command, which even if you were on drive B, you could tell it to search drive A um, or drive A and B for commands. And that saved you from this problem. Well, Flex does that. In fact, it does it a little one step better. It has a command called assign. And this lets you... Um, take, take um, make assignments for the system drive and the work drive. System drive is what is accessed whenever it wants to do a command for the most part. What it's saying is the system drive is all. So what that means is if you type any command, it will go to drive zero first and then drive one or two or three if you had them looking for that command. The work drive is the one you will 
basically open and close or access files, anything else you're doing. And that's going to be drive one, which is, for example, where we have these files. So if I ran basic and specified lunar, it would automatically get it off of drive one, but it would go to drive zero to load the command. So let me, let me show you what, what I mean by that. So let's say uh, I want to look at a file. So I have this demo.txt. This is actually a source file for a little assembly program, the demo program we've been running in other videos. So I want to list that. So I say list demo.txt. List is a command. It's going to go to the system drive, which is all. So it's going to go to drive zero first and look for list. And it will find it there, load it, and execute it. List will then open a file. Well, it's going to go to the work drive. So it's going to go to one. So without us doing any special typing, this is going to do exactly what we want. It's going to run the system file from the system directory, system disk, but then it's going to access the data file from the disk we're working on. So let's zoom back just a bit and uh, watch this happen. We can see the two drives there. And now I'll hit return, and you'll see we start off over here on drive zero loading the list command, and now you can see that it's accessing the data file and we're scrolling by. So just like you expect without having to have default drives like A and B, and yet 95% of the time this is going to do what you intended. Very handy little feature. Um, the problem is ASN has to be executed every time you power up to assign it to be this way. By default it puts both of them to drive zero. Well, Flex makes this very easy. If you have a um, file on your system disk called startup, I'm still fighting type around this tripod. It's automatically executed at power up. So in this startup file, I've got a tty set command. That command is used to set some parameters about the console. And then you see this colon, that's a command separator, sort of like in basic where you can put two commands on one line. Here's my ASN. I ran ASN, set system equals all, work equals one. This is automatically run whenever you start up the computer, so you don't have to worry about it. It's configured exactly like you want, and this is the way I use it, and it's configured exactly like I need every time. Now this ability to run a simple command file at startup was added in CPM in version 3. Now technically you could do it in 2 as well, um, but back then you actually had to patch the command processor in the um, CPM out in the boot tracks, and you had to patch the BIOS to do it, and when you put in the name of the file to run, you actually had to put that in byte by byte, in hex. Um, so it was definitely not a user-friendly thing. Nothing nearly as simple as editing a simple file like startup and, and it just automa automatically ran. Again, they put that in CPM3 um, to have something similar to this. All right, so let's take a look again over here. Again, cat w with no arguments is going to give me a directory of what I'm working on, and that is this uh, work disk. Demo.txt is the um, demonstration program that we've used several times in the past. It's a, an assembly language program. Let's go ahead and assemble it. Again, the assembler's on drive zero. It's out getting that right now. It's a big program. Okay, now you just heard the disk click and now it's going to assemble demo.txt for us. Alright, it spits out a nice formatted listing here to the screen. Call it, uh, call it standard out. And in a minute we'll see how we can direct that to a file. Okay, so now if we take a look, we'll see that we've got uh, Cat WD is going to give us all the files that begin with D. So here's our source file demo.txt and it made demo.bin for us. Here's something that's kind of neat. I can run that just by typing its name. That may not seem too significant. Let's go ahead and just run it real quick. It may not seem too significant, but a couple of things are going on here. Number one, demo.bin is on our work drive. So it went to the system drive, couldn't find it, came to the work drive and found it. The other thing that's interesting, CPM would only run a command file or run a program if it was a .com file. So demo in this, or like in this one, it's equivalent of a .cmd or command file. But Flex allows you to run any program just by typing its full name. And if it's executable, it'll go ahead and run it for you. So that's kind of a handy feature. Um, now, this other thing that we saw is that the listing came to the screen. You can actually redirect that to a file with the output command. So I can say O oh, and give it a file name. Let's call it demo.list and then give it the command. So we want to do the assembly of demo.txt. Now you'll notice I had to put the one in front of demo. The output command assumes you want to go to the system disk by default. Not 100% sure why. I think one reason may have been because it wants to delete the old binary. 
Um, maybe because typically you'd save it to a file if you then wanted to print it. And um, Flex had a nice system for printing with a spooler so that you could go on and do other things while it was printing a file. So maybe that's why it dumped it to, to drive zero. I'm not an expert on Flex yet. All right, so now we have uh, demo.list because that's what we created right here. We can take a look at that. And again, list is coming off of drive zero, demo is coming off of our work drive, just like you would expect. So there's our listing file. So the ability to redirect output to a file um, was something that wasn't in CPM2. They added that in CPM3 with a put command. And as you might expect, there's an inverse of that where you take input from a file. And actually, you can actually send things directly to the printer this way with a P command. So um, pretty flexible setup there. All right, um, let's see what else do we have here. All right, so go ahead and let's run basic. Basic, and I want to run lunar.base. So this is going to go to drive zero and load basic, which is very large. This takes a while to load. Then basic will be up and running, and it's going to go ahead and load lunar.base. Well, that's a file that's going to come from the work disk, which it just switched to. I don't know if you can hear those drives click or not. And when you do it this way, it automatically is running. So now we're running the lunar lander program. And we'll do some free fall. And then put on some brakes. And you've seen me do that before. I have I know how to cheat, so it's not as so much fun anymore. Well, cheat's the wrong word. I know the answer. All right, so this basic does not have the ability to do a listing of files. That, of course, makes the program a little smaller because it doesn't have to worry about doing a directory listing. But you can always return to Flex. And here I could do a directory listing and take a look at what other files I might want to load. In fact, you could do most any of the normal commands here. I could copy files, delete files, list a file, print a file, it doesn't matter, and still now go back into basic. You do that with a jump 103. Uh, basic loads at 100. You've seen this in some of the other videos. 100 is a very standard address for a lot of programs. That means the warm start address of a program is three bytes later, so that's the jump 103. Or sometimes people just write a simple program and assembly program that just did a jump to 103, like call it continue, C-O-N-T. And so you could just type continue there. All right, so if you look, now we are back in basic um, at the basic prompt, and the Lunar Lander program is still in here. Now this is significant um, compared to CPM. CPM could never do anything like this. We actually went back into the operating system, did something, then came back into the program that somehow magically didn't get clobbered. Anything you did in basic that wasn't an intrinsic, excuse me, anything you did in CPM that wasn't an intrinsic program would have ended up getting clobbered as soon as you ran it, and then basic in this program would have been gone. So how does this work? Well, this is part of making, uh, taking lemons and making lemonade, that old, that old saying. If you recall way back in one of the very early videos, I mentioned that the Southwest hardware had to be designed to match what Motorola's MicBug ROM expected. And some of that caused some holes in memory that weren't very desirable. So for example, all the I.O. devices were placed smack dab in the middle of the address space at 8,000 hex. So you could have RAM from 0 up through 32K, hex 7 FFF, but then at 8,000 you had to have your I.O. devices. And they put in um, they put in 2K in the address space to take that up, because up at 8,000 MicBug expected some RAM. So standard Southwest system then has RAM starting at 8,000, going another 8K up to BFFF, where at C1000 they now have um, standard EEPROM like we've seen on this uh, on the uh, Percom disk controller. Then up at E1000 has to be the uh, the prom, the MicBug prom or the SwatBug prom, all the way up through the top of memory. So the hardware layout was predetermined from day one by that MicBug prom, and that didn't lend itself to having a nice wide open memory space. So what they did with the design of Flex is work around that. You know that first 32K is always free for programs. Uh, 8,000 can't be, but 8,000 through BFF has to be RAM. So that's where they put Flex. Flex is at a fixed location on the 6800 machines from A1000 through BFFF. And in the middle of that, well, not the middle, but in that, from A100 to A600, uh, so about a little over, about one and a quarter K bytes, um, 
is space to run all .cmd files. So when you run a CMD program, it runs up at A100, not clobbering any of the program space for quote generic programs that might be down at zero or hex 100. So that's a pretty nice way to take advantage of the fact that you're going to be split up because of this early design for MicBug, but make it a good thing. So you've got an operating system in a fixed location, so you don't have to worry about move CPM and sysgen and memory sizes like you did with CPM because the operating system is always in a fixed location. It makes patching it simpler or easier if you ever needed to. Um, and it gives you ability to have this special space where commands can be run that are loadable programs without clobbering user programs. So in the end, I thought that was a pretty neat way of, of working around these holes and actually making it useful, productive uh, result out of all of it. All right, so let's go ahead and load um, a program called Chase. This is the same one we did demos with, looking at the Southwest versus the Altair. Um, and then we also compared the Altair basics, the 6800 versus the 8080. And if you recall, um, we saw how slow the Southwest Technical Basic was, and, but the reason was because it was carrying nine significant digits in decimal as opposed to using a 32-bit binary for floating point, which only carried about six digits. So Southwest is slower, but it'd be much better for large numbers, uh, especially accounting and math kind of numbers. Anyway, if we watch this, we'll see that this is relatively quick. Go ahead and hit go. This finishes actually a bit faster than the Altair 8800 um, or the even the... Remember the Altair, well, I guess the two are about the same time, about the same speed. So the Altair 680 Basic 6800 ran about the same speed as the 8080 in the full floating point. And the reason this runs that fast is because, yes, this is also just a 32-bit uh, floating point implementation as well. Therefore, you don't have the nine significant digits like you did in Southwest Technical Basic. But this kind of replaced that because most everybody ran this way. And eventually, basics came out that were double precision, that kind of thing. All right, so from here, you could also jump back to the swap bug monitor if you wanted. It's set up A048, so you could just hit go and you're back to the prompt. Um, but anyway, anyway, that covers that on this demonstration. It's a very nice operating system, on par in pretty much all respects with CPM. And in fact, there's a number of features in here that didn't show up until CPM3 came out, right about the end of CPM's existence. So um, certainly on par, it's not the reason that CPM and 8080s took off and 6800s and Flex did not. The underlying reason for that is a little more obvious, and that is the fact that it was a good year, year and a half until disk drives came out for the Southwest products, the 6800, after it was available for the 8080. And during that year, business all went the way of the 8080 and Z80 because they wanted floppy disk. And by then, by the time Southwest came out with it, it was just too little too late and the momentum had already totally shifted over to the S100 side with the 8080s. But both of these operating systems took complete control of the disk for you. You didn't have to worry about holes or file sizes like we saw with Northstar DOS or our mini DOS where you had to fit things in and repack disks. Um, they both did that completely different. Um, the way CPM took care of all that was all done down in the directories with cluster approaches, sort of like your FAT12 and FAT32 type things with DOS and miniature, whereas Flex here did it with linked list, which is kind of a old-fashioned way of doing it, but they both had their advantages and disadvantages, um, so you couldn't say one was directly better than the other back in the time of these smaller devices. But anyway, that does it for this video. Um, I'm not sure what the next video will be. I've pretty much gone through most of the hardware I have here, but uh, I'm sure something will come along in the 6800 world that interests me before too long, and I'll share that with you as well.